Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey, back in for 2023, another year of YouTube. I'm starting a bit of a new segment where I'm interviewing fellow content creators for Q&A type podcasts, a similar kind of thing I've done with a few players at this point. And my first guest, we kind of started the whole content creation thing within about a year of each other. We've kind of risen through the ranks together. I'm joined by a South African bloke, another follower of God. I'd like my special guest to introduce mm -hmm. himself. Take it away, bro. Yes, thanks so much for having me, Max. Um, really appreciate it, man. Big fan of what you do and really proud of how far you've come. So my name's Austin. Um, I created Bok Memes a few years ago, as you say, around the same time as each other. I think it was just before the World Cup 2019, 2018, around there. Um, and basically what I did on my channel was create funny uh, South African rugby content. Um, and these days I now work for Ball Carrier as a content creator. And yeah, no, blessed and thankful to be on. Thank you. Been a bit of a um, journey for you, my man. Um, so before we kind of get into the story of Bok Memes, which is what this wee podcast is going to be about, um, we'll get to know a bit about Austin for you guys in the audience and um, get to know how um, his kind of relationship with rugby developed. So firstly, Bo, um, what got you into rugby? Like how old were you when you first watched the game and stuff? Yeah, I was um, lucky enough to uh, be born into the sport. So um, my dad was a big fan of rugby. Uh, so I was just thankfully brought up in it, uh, which I think most South Africans and probably a lot of New Zealanders like yourself it's probably very similar. Um, so from very young, my dad would start uh, showing me a rugby ball. Uh, we would play together. He would teach me the basics. And yeah, from very young, I would watch rugby on and off with my dad. The earliest memories I have are probably like between the ages of around five and nine, when I would watch a lot of the games leading up to the 2007 World Cup. Um, I remember that quite clearly, and especially the 2007 World Cup. I remember a lot of those games very clearly. So, yeah, it's always been a big part of my life. Yeah, very good stuff there, my man. Um, I'll also ask you as well, just for a bit of a laugh, like what position did you play yourself? Um, how far did you actually make it in the game as well? <laughs> yeah, so in primary school, I actually played prop in the front row. I was, oh, you did, mate. I had I'd, I'd, I'd quite a different body, body type back then. I was... Yeah. Uh, I was fairly tall for my age, but I was quite stocky and a little bit fat, but I enjoyed playing um, in the front row. But yeah, in high school, from around the age of 14, 13, I moved to flank uh, and second row lock. So the, really in the tight five and uh, loose forward kind of positions, never played in the back line. I always wanted to play scrum off. That was my dream position, but <laughs> it was my destiny to be a forward. Um, and the furthest I got, I stopped playing after high school. Um, I went to a few Western Province trials, which is like trials for the Stormers, basically. Uh, but I never made it. So, yeah, after high school is when I, when I finished playing. Awesome stuff, bro. Um, I, I wasn't thinking you were going to be a prop when you were a kid, though, mate. <laughs> When did you play? Lock, bro. Um, oh man, um, that's crack up. So after finishing up as a player, so you started your Instagram page called Bok Memes about 2018 or so. What actually yeah. kind of gave you the idea to start Bok Memes? Yeah, that's a cool story actually. So um, I was a student back then. And when I started the page, I didn't really think much of it. It was kind of just like something for fun. I was hoping it would grow well, but uh, it did exceed my expectations. So what gave me the idea was there was a page back in the day called Rugby Memes Official. I'm not sure if you followed it. I remember it, mate. I definitely do. Yeah, they, they were like the top rugby page for a while. Um, I more, bro. Yeah, they were great. Uh, and I was following this page and I thought, like, it's really cool, but it had quite, I felt it had quite a strong, like, European perspective on the game um, and I love their content but I was seeing in the comments a lot of South Africans commenting and I almost felt like there wasn't really a South African voice being represented in social media uh, online in rugby in the rugby world 
So I thought, okay, it would potentially work very well if there could be some type of South African voice uh, to, to express a lot of our grievances and whatnot. So I started this page, Park Memes, and that's exactly what the tone of the page was to express yeah. South African jokes and perspectives in a funny, very biased way. And <laughs> thankfully it worked. The, the, the South Africans just like that kind of humor. So it worked well. It's, um, it's, it's no harm in being biased when you're open about it, my bro, honestly, like that's fine. I, um, so exactly. having, <laughs> having just like started the page as just a regular fan, what skills did you actually learn to contribute towards your content creations and stuff? Yeah, I'll be honest with you, bro. In the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing. I literally just used a meme app on my phone. Um, is charged. Yeah, did, did you do the same? Just yeah, use yeah, like yeah. weird Keep meme going, apps. Keep, yeah, going. Yeah. Keep going. Exactly. So just kept using a, uh, that and I didn't know what I was doing for like the first two years at least and my memes if I look back on them now they look terrible I don't know how people even liked my stuff it was terrible but um, as time went on I started learning more skills um, so video editing and then I started doing most of my memes on Photoshop uh, learned the whole face swap thing and all of that but I'd say the key skills uh, I learned as a content creator would be Photoshop uh, video editing and also just uh, how to manage an audience. So when you, the more you engage with a big audience, the more you learn how to deal with them, how to deal with funny, rude comments, how to deal with good comments, how to deal with DMs. So it's just an experiencing, but I must say the most I learned about content creation was, was when I actually started working for Ball Carrier because that's like a professional outlet. So my boss really trained me into how to produce content on a more professional level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you've kind of answered this question already. I did prepare though this question. What kind of material did you produce at the time to get a foothold in the Zeitgeist of rugby culture? Um, I'll let you kind of have a chance to explain any kind of other things that you did to get that foothold. Yeah, so in the beginning, it was just memes um, and it worked. But I learned very quickly that it's very important to have a personality and a face to a brand, mm. which I know you've done as well, which has worked very well for you. You've grown extremely quickly since doing that. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it's beneficial for many reasons. Uh, you know, it, it's more attractable to brands if you want to work with brands and also just uh, people like to see a personality attached to you. Uh, a channel so after the after memes i started doing like skits and funny kind of videos and even a few opinion pieces and that really made a big difference in people being able to recognize not just the um the page as memes but also as a personality yeah yeah that's um some pretty fair uh, comments about starting the um use of yourself personality and stuff like um mm. I can definitely attest to those things working there. Um, so with the 2019 mm. Rugby World Cup being a huge highlight for South Africans, how are you actually able to capitalize on it to kind of grow your following? The World Cup made a huge difference. I remember when we won the final, I think my page grew by like a few thousand followers in like a few days. Oh. So I think a lot of those people who have unfollowed later because I don't know if it's the same in New Zealand, but a lot of people that aren't rugby fans they'll watch the world cup and then they're suddenly the biggest rugby fans mm. but then it kind of fades away afterwards but the world cup definitely made a big it. yeah yeah so Keep i think the up. world cup made a, uh, the world cup made a big difference because a lot of people were watching there was a lot of controversy and just south africa winning made a big difference so um if south africa didn't win that world cup and if south africa were going through a difficult phase in their rugby i think my follower account would have been a lot less. That's just hmm. how South Africans are. When things are going well in rugby, everyone wants to kind of jump on the wagon. Fair points. Um, you also, bro, <laughs> um, I remember this wee skit here. I tried my best to get it to number one. I'm sorry, bro. Um, you made a wee bit of a Springbok rap song to celebrate the World Cup win. Surely yes. you've got another one on the way, my dear. Surely. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I, I actually did make a rap after that. I don't know if you saw it. It was called the Schoolboy Rugby Rap. Um, oh, yeah, you did. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. So I, I actually, thankfully, did do a follow-up rap. Um, I had a friend who knows a bit about music who helped me, and yeah. he edited my voice a bit to make it sound better because I'm not a natural singer at all. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that was good fun, and that definitely, those videos went viral nicely, and um, I think it was just something that's that, that was unique. But uh, So I was very thankful that people enjoyed that, even though my voice actually sounds terrible. I think just the concept people enjoy. But yeah, who knows? Maybe maybe I might drop another rap at some point. Um, but I, I need to get someone who's musically gifted to help me again because I'm not. The, um, the thing is <laughs> like that is you kind of have to have your victory lap, don't you, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I was able to write the raps myself yeah. and make them rhyme nicely. But in terms of actually making it sound like music, that's a whole different story. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. So as Bok memes began to become a bit of a big deal, how do you actually work content creating into life to balance it with a day job? Yeah, that was actually very tough. Um, at the time, I was working basically three jobs. Uh, so I had a day job. I used to be a teacher. I believe you also want to possibly be a teacher in the future. Is that still part of your plans? Yeah, yeah, definitely a bit of a long-term goal for me, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah, that was my day job. I was, yeah, no, it's an awesome career, awesome career. Um, so I was doing that as my day job. Then I was doing content creation for ball carrier as well as a part-time job. Okay. And then I was I was working on Bok memes as well, keeping Bok memes going. So it was not a lifestyle I necessarily recommend because it's – it took a lot out of me and it was quite unhealthy in many ways. Hmm. But at the same time, um, I also think it's good for to have a season in your life where you are extremely busy and we work very hard to make your goals a reality. So it was thankfully a short term thing. But basically, the solution was just to plan well, prioritize um, and get rid of distractions. I got rid of my PlayStation. I sold my PlayStation because I didn't want that to be a distraction anymore. I wanted to focus on my content creation. So it's actually not a bad um, idea to sell the PlayStation good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've I've now bought an Xbox recently, kind of to reward myself after that very busy span. So which I think is good. It, it, it's it's very important to enjoy your life as well and enjoy the moments. But uh yeah, I, I would say try to limit distractions and a big thing. Make sure whatever content creation you're doing, you enjoy. Because I feel if you enjoy whatever content creation you're doing, you're going to be much more motivated to continue doing it. I loved Bok memes, making memes. So it was a joy for me to do it. You know what I mean? It didn't always actually feel like a chore. Uh, so that's the key, I think, actually, enjoying it. Some, uh, some really good words of advice there from some aspiring content creators there, man. Um, that's uh, some good lessons for some people to learn if they're keen to um, jump on the bandwagon. Since um, we know the YouTube algorithm, I'll just word it this way. So with the work of Satan having a big impact on 2020, um, the box didn't actually play at all. So what allowed you to continue your momentum in 2020? Yeah, that's tough, eh? Because, uh, you know, it's so focused on the the channel is so focused on what's happening in rugby and without the spring box playing i was like flip this is this is missing a lot so i made a lot of COVID 19 jokes which really helped a lot um like i started a series called day 10 of no rugby day 11 of no rugby kind of thing uh so i also did a little bit of content about the other teams i were playing i did a little i made fun of the all blacks there was also um a bit of domestic rugby that did start in south africa thankfully around i think august a lot later than everyone else um so that helped a bit doing a bit of domestic rugby and i just also another thing i did was i just started doing general rugby jokes and stuff so about the game in general but it definitely was a big hindrance because the spring box are the fuel of what the page 
uh, represents. He says it um, as it should be after all. Um, in 2021, yeah. though, it was a bit of an interesting year, that one. Instagram kind of been a, it kind of began rather to alter its algorithm to behave a bit more like TikTok. You know that I'm a dude that's not too pro TikTok, so I wasn't too keen, things like that. But man, you you killed it with the use of reels to grow as a creator. What was the actual idea to expand into more video based content? Thanks, man. Yeah, no, I know you're not a big a big fan of TikTok, but in in terms of Instagram. Yeah, 2021 was the main period when I started introducing my face and personality more to the Bok Memes brand. So uh, I started doing a lot of skits and uh, pretending to be the different South African teams, pretending to be Russi Erasmus, you know, jokes like that, skits featuring my face. And just the concept of that, again, attaching a personality to the brand made a big difference. Um, and Video content is, in many ways, the future. Uh, there's still a huge space for photo content, still content, but it's becoming more and more video content. Uh, so TikTok definitely revolutionized, uh, revolutionized how content uh, is done, actually. Um, so that definitely made a big difference in how I was going to approach everything because TikTok is actually very much, uh, it's about using your face and it's about uh, your personality on TikTok. Yeah. So I think that filtered through to Instagram as well. And yeah, I just uh, capitalized on the opportunity to, to attach a face to the brand. Yeah, good on you, mate. Um, 2021 also saw a Lions tour somehow managed to happen despite the way work of station will call it was mm -hmm. content around this series kind of able to get you a bit more momentum similar to the world cup definitely the lions tour was a huge uh opportunity and for many reasons it was like the first couple of games the springboks played since the world cup so everyone was very excited for it there was a lot of controversy in those games. Uh, Amaro Mar Toje and um, even Etzebeth fighting each other and um, Stuart Hogg supposedly biting Billy LaRue. A lot of interesting stuff happened that series and it was close. We, we almost lost it, but we thankfully won it. Uh, so there was a lot of content to be made. I made a lot of memes around that time, which people enjoyed. Um, and that's also when I actually started to get more attention internationally. A lot of uh, European-based people started to come across my page. And even though they saw I was biased, they actually enjoyed my take on everything. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that made a big difference that, that period. And again, the fact that the Springboks won the tour helped my page a lot. Definitely would have. Like you, you, seriously, bro, you blew up like crazy during that year with players beginning to follow you and an eventual follow account I still have yet to reach because New Zealand's a very small country of 40,000 in total. Um, how did it actually feel to start crossing milestones like those after you just as a regular fan started this page back in 2018? Thank you, bro. Yeah, it was a huge blessing. Um, and I'm just very grateful to everyone who followed the page and who enjoyed the content because I'm by no means the most talented comedian, but people just enjoyed what I was doing. So I'm extremely grateful for that. And it was a really great feeling. Um, it was a, it, um, when I started it, I never imagined it would have, would have got into that size, but again, it was a lot of hard work. Um, it, it wasn't just luck. Um, I believe it was a lot of hard work and a few years in the making. So I think a lot of people think it might just, those kind of things might just be luck, but it's, it, it's, it was actually a lot of planning, a lot of strategy behind it. Um, Definitely. Uh, going into that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, it also, when it comes to audience interactions, player interactions, stuff like that, what's like the most heartwarming stuff that I guess players have said, fans have come across with, What's some like really cool stories that you've got to share with me 
and you'll be at the goals. One story that really sticks out to me, it, it's mainly from the fans, to be honest, because yeah, yeah. Um, there was one story that someone said to me, a guy said that he, the only reason he has the Instagram app is to look at my page. He says, <laughs> you will never use Instagram. You will only go into it after a few weeks or a few days to see if I've posted anything. And that meant a lot to me that people are willing to keep the whole app on their phone just to check what I had posted. So that really meant a lot to me and just lots of messages, people saying they really enjoyed what I'm doing and they're really grateful for it. So that was all really heartwarming stuff that believe it or not, I didn't get a lot of traction amongst players. A few players did follow me, like Sia Kulisi followed me, which I was really yeah. grateful for. But the concept of Bach memes yeah. never appealed to people in the industry, in, in the rugby industry, which, which is very interesting. Yeah. And, and I'll explain why. So it appealed very well to the average fan, but it didn't appeal very well to players, coaches, people in social media, uh, managers, stuff like that. And the reason for that is um, I think number one was because I could be a bit controversial sometimes making fun of people. Or no, no, I never made fun of people. I made that very clear. I only I think we made, made fun, of the, fun of actions and stuff. That's what you're trying to say. Eh? Yes. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't take me seriously because I was just a memes page in a lot of people's eyes. Right. Yeah. So um, it, I think a lot of people saw it kind of as like a joke. They didn't really take it seriously. Like they thought I was just a little kid making memes kind of thing. Uh, but it appealed very well to the average fan. So that was actually frustrating because for a very long time, I was trying to get into the industry. Hmm. But thankfully, the fans enjoyed it. Definitely. Yeah. Fans definitely were um, enjoying it and stuff. Um so 2022 it's all the good luck continue as the audience as you guys have learned from austin he's done a bit of work for ball carrier but um with all this stuff here with like ball carrier so you were you were doing like freelance work before they actually got involved in your page right just clarifying yes yeah, so i actually started in 2021 yeah, yeah um exactly. Yeah. during the rugby championship in october that's when i started okay just clarifying because um 2022 kind of saw them hire you as a full-on creator like the page turned from bok memes to ball carrier south africa how did they actually reach out to you about making this kind of deal and taking it to the next level i guess yeah, so um, how I initially got involved in Ball Carrier was uh, the head of content at the time. Um, I was already in touch with him because he also had a rugby page and him and I started our rugby pages at a similar time. What was that uh, his page called again, sorry? Fab Rugby. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, keep yeah going. He, did, he did kit designs and, and English-based content mainly. And... Uh, he got a full-time position at Ball Carrier and he was looking for content creators. So I got into touch with him saying I was available and they got me involved. Um, it was quite a small deal in the beginning, just a few hours a week. But again, that's where I learned the most about content creation, how to edit properly, how to make things look good, Photoshop a lot better. Um, and one of my main roles was to be pretty much in charge of the TikTok. Uh, I know you don't like TikTok, but <laughs> um, that was one of my main rub roles. In, bro, rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had to, basically my uh, role was to make a video a day on TikTok. Okay. And I was able to learn a lot about the platform and what works. And I was able to um, help grow the TikTok very, very well. Hmm. And I think the bosses were quite impressed with that and were eventually, I think they could see something in me, which I was very grateful for. And they were generous enough to give me a very good offer. Um, and yeah, so that's where I am today. And I'm very thankful for that. Um, why did you opt to accept the deal to change Bok memes to all carriers South Africa? 
like uh, what was your reason for accepting well there's a short answer and there's a long answer so the short answer is um simply that it was a very good offer um in many ways um and it's set me up almost for life um and it, it's all it's always been a dream of mine to be a full-time content creator yeah. and I was trying very hard to break into the South African market. I was trying to do stuff for the Springboks. I was approaching people in super sport yeah. and I was constantly getting ignored and yeah. uh, not taken seriously. So I was very frustrated because, you know, this was what I wanted to do. Um, so Ball Carrier made me a very, very good offer. And you see, my content is quite a bit different to the type of content you do. Like oh, you can monetize it. You can monetize your content nicely, like with the analysis and everything, mm. but the analysis isn't my passion. I enjoy the funny short form kind oh, of exactly. content. Like, um, that, that's my passion. So that. we've all got a different forms of expressing our love for rugby. Yes, exactly. So I, I like the comedy side of things, and um, it was a very unique opportunity. The positions like this are very rare to come by. Uh, so I just. I felt like it was what it was what I was praying for and it just felt like the right time. So um, I'm extremely grateful for it. And now I get to do what I love every day. So it, it's been a massive blessing. Yeah, awesome. Bro. Um, have you got like any particular advice for up and coming creators looking to go down a similar path to us um, just mm -hmm. shortly before this um, Zoom time rather runs out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, I will say, Number one is try things. Don't be afraid to try things. Uh, I've had, I've tried a few different pages which have failed. Some yeah. have worked. I do have other projects apart from rugby um, and a lot of them have failed. But the thing is just to try it and get yourself out there and to try things. And if it doesn't work, either stay consistent until it does work or move on to the next idea. Um, the second thing I would say is... Uh, as I mentioned earlier, make sure you enjoy it because if you enjoy it, that's going to be the fuel for everything and it will keep you motivated and consistent. Another thing I would say is to try and learn as much as you can from people who have been there. So try and get into contact with someone who's already been successful in the industry and ask them for, for advice. Some of them might ignore you, but a lot of them won't. I'm always uh, very happy to help any content creator wherever you're from. So uh, if anyone's a content creator listening, you're always welcome to message me for advice. Um, one of my main things I want to do going forward is uh, using the blessed blessings I have to help others. So uh, yeah. I'd say those are the three keys. That's, um, that's a really good way, I think, to wrap everything up, bro. Um, it was a real honor, I guess, to uh, get you on to explain the story of Bok Memes Austin. So thanks for coming on, bro. Um, I'll link his uh, his media in the description for all you guys watching. Thank you very much for coming back. We're going to get into another very good season, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this wee podcast we've got. Um, thank you very much for viewing, and I'll see you next time. See you guys from Max. Cheers.